I'm India Monet here with Miss Janetta Collier. How are you today? I'm great. How are you doing, India? I'm good. So I know that you're a woman of many hats. You're a businesswoman, an author, a CEO. Just tell me a little bit about your journey and how you got started with everything. Well, my journey started um, many, many years ago. Uh, I was working for this big corporation in Scottsdale, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And um, I took ill. I took uh, desperately ill where um, they flew in a doctor to meet with me and my husband and inform me that I had valley fever. And that at that time, uh, it was so new to, um, I won't say to the world, but it was so new to the area and to my system that uh, my, si my system was shutting down. And they informed me at that time, uh, me and my husband, that we'd have to move to Dallas in order for me to be treated. Um, the doctor had given me a six month lifespan on this illness because it had gotten so far. Um, so at that point, I was also in school trying to finish my degree. I had my family. I had my ideal job. I was just living my quote unquote best life at that time. And I was uh, really not feeling the ideal of moving. So um, after we sat down and talked and realized that there was my only option, then I left my job and we moved to Dallas. And there I got treated and, um, and started feeling better, doing uh, better, feeling um, more energetic, started pouring my energy into my family again, uh, pouring energy into the community. And then I decided to go back to corporate America, but I wanted to know that corporate America had changed before I went back and um, I decided to jump in and I did that and I quickly realized corporate America hadn't changed, not from the time in which uh, women wasn't see, seen as leaders or progressive. Uh, women was seen as mostly an assistant role or um, um, an assistant to someone, a, a male of a higher level. So that discouraged me a lot and I just started, I just decided to start my own business. And my first business I started was um, getting into real estate and trying to establish myself in the commercial real estate world and a residential real estate world, since that was my background in the corporate setting. And then mm -hmm. I started Imaginary Glass Ceiling. That was the first, I would say, um, poignant start of my entrepreneur journey. Because as you know, Imaginary Glass Ceiling was a coin that they used back in the 80s which let women of color especially know that the ceiling in corporate America was only um, uh, pen penetrated by other people and not by the minority women so or women of color. So uh, that I, I love the name Imaginary Glass Ceiling because for me, it meant that the glass ceiling was only your mind, only imaginary. So my business, Imaginary Glass Ceiling, set up just for that. Uh, so that started me on my entrepreneur journey. Since mm -hmm. then, I've um, started Imaginary Glass Ceiling, um, like I spoke of earlier, New Blanc Investments and Janetta Cario Enterprises, uh, where I house other of my endeavors. So that's what got me started on this entrepreneur journey. Right. And you talked about the Imaginary Glass Ceiling. I know you teach women how to break up with their nine to five. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your advice for someone or a woman who is looking to break up with their nine to five? Like, what's the the small starting blocks that you can give us? The small starting blocks I can give you is first, you need to uh, assess where you are in, um, in that process, meaning uh, do you have money set aside to do that? Um, do you have an ideal, a dream that you know is viable for the community? Because as we know, if it's not viable for the community, it won't succeed. Um, also, I would ask them to look at your budget. Um, look at if you have enough money to sustain you through that process because you will need money to pour into your business and also to pay your bills. And then look at a business plan. Look at um, investors, depending on what type of business you have, and really set your business up for success, whether you set it up in an entity, um, LLC, sole proprietorship, corporation, whatever that looks like, and get advice and get mentors to help you. So those are just some of the small things that you can do when you start setting your business up and leaving your nine to five. And also, I would like to add, don't be so um, aggressive in just quitting your job. 
You mm -hmm. never quit a job until you have hold of something else. And then don't leave on bad terms because you never know when you have to turn around and pivot and go back. So right. you want to all always leave on good terms. All right. And leading up to that, I know that you're doing something starting in Dallas called the Boss Ladies of Dallas. Yes. Where there's you and other women, kind of like a Shark Tank type of ordeal, you know, helping. Is it just women, right? Yes. Just helping so women. Mm hmm what their business is. So talk a little bit about that because I'm excited for that. <laughs> oh, I am so excited. Thank you for bringing that up. So Boss Ladies of Dallas, um, I call it my baby because I, you know, I was seeing, watching television, reality TV and seeing women of color portrayed in such a negative way. In my mind, it was such a negative way. And I know for us, we're better than that. You know, we're, we're women who, um, have helped lead so many different opportunities to fruition. And um, I wanted to show us in a better light. So what I, what I did was I um, invented this show called The Boss Ladies of Dallas, like you just stated. And it consists of six women, myself included. And we all come from different corporate, different business background. We're all entrepreneurs. We're all CEOs of our own company. And we all um, are striving to help other women also who's looking to jump into the endeavor of being their own boss um, to show them the steps on how to do it. So each lady in the Boss Ladies of Dallas comes to the table with different abilities, um, different strategies in business. One, we have a, um, a person that all about systems. She knows how to set up a business system that makes your business hum. Uh, we have a lady that um, that's a coach as far as um, fitness coach and food coach, because as we know in our bodies, we need to have our bodies whole in order for our minds to, to work in the capacity it needs to in order to run a business. We also have um, a woman who talks about business strategies. I talk about the mindset and how that helps you in your business. We have a communication and marketing, and we also have someone that deals with fashion because as we know, um, how you dress portrays a lot about your business and it's, it speaks a lot about you. So this show um, helps other women of color, all women of color that has started a business or thinking about starting a business. They can uh, come on the show through an interview and come on the show and present their ideal to the boss ladies. And at that time we collaborate, we decide if we wanna take them on. And if we decide to take them on, then they go through a boss ladies boot camp, which, which consists of all of us six ladies helping them with our expertise. And then um, at that time we pick one person who will win the grand prize, which we will rebrand, relaunch them on the show and hopefully mm -hmm. give them scholarship in order to help them move forward in their uh, business. Oh, wow. So yeah. when you're um, looking at the different women who are, you know, pitching their business to you all. What is something that you guys are really looking for? Like what makes a great business? What makes a great business? Wow. A great business is something that is needed in the industry. A great business is, um, is something that I want to say that haven't been seen before, but that's not true because as we know, there's plenty of business out there that you can kind of say that it leads to the same thing, but it just depends on how that business is ran. But also great business is based on the person who's presenting the business, the founder of the business, the person who's working on the business, the person who passionate is of the business in order for us to really see what the business has to offer. So when you come to us, we look at all facets. We see uh, if your business is making money, uh, if there's any loopholes that we can help you tighten up in your business, um, who you are and why you present the business the way you present it. What is the story behind your business? So it gives us a lot of insight on if this business is something that is viable in the community. Oh, okay. So what advice would you give a woman who just has like a dollar in a dream. She doesn't know, you know, what she, where she's going, what she's doing, but she knows she has the vision to. Oh, wow. I love that question. My advice I would give to a woman with a dollar in a dream is that whatever dream you have, you need to bring it to fruition because if you don't, you will have regrets. That's first of all. Second of all, that's a gift and your gift is to be given out into the world. 
You know, I, I believe that we were all born with a gift and our gift is to be given. Our gift is not to uh, perish with us. And so if you have a dollar and a dream, I would say go out, go out for your dream. Try to make it happen. If you fail, that's okay, because failure mm -hmm. is a part of success. A lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people feel like if they fail, then, oh, I have to give up. No, you don't have to give up. Right. Hopefully you learn something from that and you keep going and you pivot and you turn. Um, I would like to say to all the women out there to go after your dream. Go after your dream. If it's a dream, go after mm -hmm. it. How, how do you wear so many hats from being a CEO to working in real estate, to being an author, to helping others? How are you able to manage all of these different lanes and do it so effortlessly? Or even just like, you know, if you have, you know, real estate and uh, being a business coach, how, how do they all merge together in your life? If that makes sense. If you think about it, all of it comes to the same point, which is service. Mm. It all comes to service. Um, my passion is to serve. And it's just so happened I have the ability to do it in different lanes, but it all comes to the same. So when I serve I, in real estate, I'm serving people mm -hmm. to reach their highest point. Uh, when I serve in coaching, I'm serving people to reach their highest point. Uh, my book, The Best You, A 365-Day Motivation Journey, it is servicing the reader to reach to their highest point. Um, Boss Ladies of Dallas, it again is serving women mm -hmm. to reach to their highest point. Everything that I do pivot to one area, which is for people to reach their highest point. So I guess mm -hmm. it's effortless, effortless because it's my passion, because I love it. And because um, I feel it's needed. I feel we need mm -hmm. to share more and do more for each other. And for the women looking for their passion, how do you think... Um, you came up with your passion. Like, what was that aha moment that was like, this is my passion. My passion is to serve. What did that look like for you? <laughs> Gosh, I'm gonna tell you, my um, journey to finding my passion was a long journey. I've tried so many things. I've tried selling art. I've tried, um, uh, man, I've tried so many things. I, I can count them on two hands, all the things I've tried. And when I tried real estate, that was my aha moment because to see the smile on people's faces, to see them realize that they too can be a part of the American dream by owning a home or having an investment or starting generational wealth for their family and not knowing or someone not telling them that they could do these things, that became my aha moment. And so from there, just adding on to those layers of servicing or giving to people or giving them that aha moment. That's how it all started for me. But um, mm -hmm. it wasn't something that was overnight, unfortunately, or fortunately. Mm -hmm. And before we go, what else do you have coming up and let people know where they can follow you, you know, hear more from you and follow Boss Ladies of Dallas? Yes. So um, they can go to my website, JeanettaCaria.com uh, is one of the uh, platforms that I have. And on that website, you can see everything that I'm doing from the uh, real estate to investments, uh, showing people how to do uh, option trading and things of that nature and helping them invest in real estate uh, to the Boss Ladies of Dallas, which is on um, right now. We're doing our trailer. You can find it on Roku and on YouTube. We, um, we post every Friday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then also I have classes on my imaginary glass ceiling um, website and you, it's connected through geneticario.com. I have some upcoming classes that's, that's going to be launched in February. It's going to be entrepreneur boot camp and then entrepreneur mastermind classes, which will lead to my 2023 uh, women's empowerment retreat in Nairobi, Africa. Um, I'm going to be putting that, well, I'm working on putting that together now with a big team of mine. And uh, we're going to be taking a group of women to Nairobi, Africa, to have a, a tremendous time on uh, mind, body, and spirit. Uh, we're going to be exploring South Af Africa itself, and then also connecting with other women of Nairobi. Um, so that's going to be very exciting. I just came back from Nairobi, Africa in November. I went there for a 10-day uh, speaking engagement, four-tour speaking engagement, 
And it enlightened me and it just it brought so much joy to my spirit that I want to share that with other women. So you will be able to see that coming soon. Um, and you don't have to be a part of the entrepreneur boot camp in order to be a part of the women empowerment uh, retreat in 2023. So all that will be coming to you soon. Also, I have um, upcoming speaking. I was invited to speak in uh, Congo, Africa. Oh, wow. um, in June of this year. Uh, so I'm excited about that opportunity as well. Also, uh, some things coming up is um, I want to encourage all the women out there that hears my voice, all the people out there that hear my voice, to um, continue to press forward in everything that you do. Um, my book, The Best You, A 365-Day Motivation Journey, can be a callus to, to help you do those things. And then uh, any other activities that I have that I'm getting ready to bring forward to launch, again, they can find it on my website, Janetta, JanettaCardio.com. Um, I, oh gosh, I have so many things that I do yes, with, okay. and I don't have you my paper busy. with me. Um, and then book. my, yes, and then my, um, my radio show, The Bastu 365, Motivate, Educate, and Transform, that's on Wednesdays at 7 a.m. Um, so those are some of the things that I'm doing. I'm just super excited about it. Yeah. And I'm super excited for people to know more about not what I'm doing, but what's available for them right. out there. And um, and I just think we're all collaborative. This is just a small world. You hear that cliche all the time. This is a small world. This is a small mm -hmm. world. But me going to Africa, I truly found out it is a small world. Mm -hmm. And it's other people out there want to collaborate with us women, mm -hmm. want to join forces with us. And I want them to come along for the ride because it's going to be a fantastic ride. It sounds like it. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope that... Whoever hears this, tap into Ms. Janetta Collier. Yes, yes. And you can find me on Facebook, uh, Instagram. And um, yeah, just come on and be a part of it. I, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. <laughs>